Hey, my name's Connor. I work in marketing here at Replit. Um, in this video, YK and Derek, um, who's a product engineer here at Replit, walk through how we hire engineers. Um, it looks a little bit different, um, and they get into all the nitty gritty details of the interview process, how we go about it. Um, I think you'll find it really interesting. So let's jump right in. Okay, so let's start. Okay. Uh, First of all, can you tell me what the whole interview process is like usually for a software engineer? Sure. Uh, we usually start with a phone screen. And so the phone screen involves um, talking to our recruiter, getting a little bit of information about your background and seeing whether or not you know your passions and your interests align with sort of the priorities of what REPL is trying to hire for. And so for product focused people, um, we usually walk away with that with a fairly strong signal. And if things go OK, we send them a description of an algorithms problem. And the ask is to use Replit in any language to solve that algorithms problem um, within an hour. And so we usually filter candidates based on, you know, are they able to do that? And we give them complete latitude of when they're going to do that. Um, they just need to tell us when. Um, what we're able to do is understand um, from that assessment whether or not we should move them on to a future interview, which would be like an on-site interview. At that point, an on-site interview is a full day with Repolit um, where you have a panel of engineers work with you on a real-life problem. And usually that means working on a full-stack problem, so um, something that has both a server and a client and building a small application that has a little bit of tricks in it, nothing too crazy. Um, and from that, uh, you know, we start about 9 a.m. with a planning session. So we spend an hour together whiteboarding using a very cool tool called Excaladraw. It allows us to plan out what our roadmap for the day is going to look like. The purpose of that planning session is to get a really strong signal of, is this going to be a good person to work with? Do they have sort of an intuitive understanding of technology, of how to compare and contrast different implementation strategies, whether or not they understand exception handling intuitively? Um, and for example, when we push back on them, are they able to deflect uh, gracefully? Are they able to communicate succinctly to us uh, about how they feel they should implement it? Um, during that time, we were usually pretty thoughtful about the times we know it's going to be hard. So they need to make a certain API decision. So one thing that we've commonly give people is your API is going to randomly fail. So for example, we give them an API that's going to fail maybe a third of the time. And it's going to be totally random. Like, can you build a, a front end that expects that the API will fail randomly? Uh, things like that. So we throw in a few wrenches that are pretty predictable from the perspective of what you have to experience as an engineer. And if people get very flustered and confused or defensive, then we can tell earlier in the day this, this might be the sign of someone who would be really hard to work with. On the contrast, I would say the vast majority of candidates have a great experience. And when we work through these things, they respond in a very professional manner uh, with the demeanor that we would really expect from a candidate. Most people will not pass the algorithms challenge and the phone screen and end up in a place where they'd have a bad experience. From then, they usually spend around six hours on that assignment. And at the end of the day, that could be 3 p.m., 4 p.m. Pacific, uh, they would come present to us what they've built. And we would have fun experimenting with it. Um, candidates who have done especially well like to add new features and sort of impress us with their elegance of programming. Um, and that leads to a lot of discussions around uh, different trade-offs and engineering strategies, different design patterns, uh, possible UI choices, API choices. Uh, candidates who do really well are able to be both entertaining and interesting in that. And so candidates who do poorly would take about 30 minutes. So they would be very, this is what I did, and kind of drop it on us. And they're not able to like engage us and be like, this was an interesting process. They don't have questions for us. That's usually the strongest signal at the end of the day is if they don't have good questions for us, they're probably not very interested in Replit because they're getting a lot of attention. You know, Amjad and Haya, our co-founders and CEO, show up. And so you get a lot of attention. And if you don't have anything interesting to say at the end of the day, then it's not a great experience. Yeah. So that's 
that's the full cycle. Right. Yeah, it's actually good to hear because the interview process seems to like replicate the actual job process. I think that that's one of the better things. We don't do any stupid whiteboarding. I'm really glad that we don't ask you to reverse a linked list, although yeah. you might not like my question, but it's realistic of what a programmer would have to do at Repl.it. We choose what's called an authentic task. This is stuff we do every day. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm kind of curious, how did you come up with like this whole process? The interviewing process? Yeah. Well, we want people to feel like we give them a fair shake. We mm -hmm. want to not have an arbitrary process for getting hired. The strongest signal of whether or not you're going to be an effective engineer is whether or not you could do the job. And yeah. so this gives us a really ample opportunity, regardless of educational or any other background. It, you know, If you could do the job, you should get hired. And so mm -hmm. we try to replicate the experience of what it's like to do our job every day and then give a, a bite-sized version of that to people. Right. That's nice. Um, I kind of want to sort of go back to the very beginning. Sure. Uh, and ask you, like, how do you screen resumes? It's a great question. We don't screen by traditional factors. I think we do things a lot more manually than most companies do. We take a lot of time looking through our applicant tracking system to make sure that we're finding a diverse group of candidates to come into the process. And so, um, you know, traditional measures for hiring would revolve around degrees or credentials, and we are not a degrees or credentials um, weighing uh, recruiting process. We want to emphasize what people have done. We really look for people who have an interesting variety of experience. So people who have worked for one company for a very long time uh, and don't have a variety of experiences on the background might not be the best candidate. Um, we've seen people come from other startups. We've come, we've seen college dropouts. Some of our best engineers are college dropouts. Uh, we have teachers on our staff. We have yourself, like uh, prolific YouTubers. Um, we have people who have started their own businesses and have had varying levels of success. We have designers. We have all kinds of people on our staff. And the people who tend to do really well are the people who have tried things and either failed or succeeded. but have taken the path less traveled. Right. So I guess you look at their resume and try to understand what they have tried in the past. Do you look at their projects? Oh, definitely. I think that we've we've hired some candidates out of the open source community and we want to see, you know, if their resume reflects a lot of affinity for open source projects, what are what are some of those projects? I for example applied as a teacher I was a high school teacher, and I had written a lot of really interesting curriculum for Arduino programming and Java processing. And we actually got to look through a lot of the content that I had written the last five years. And I thought that that was really emblematic of what I spent a lot of my last X number of years doing. And it, re it reflected like the quality of work that I anticipate uh, doing and what I value. Uh, but the open source community, it's often great to have a conversation with people who contributed to an open source project because they have a lot to say. They probably have some opinions if they've taken the time to write a project. Yeah. Um, and you were an engineer at Facebook before, right? That's right. So I, um, I worked um, in 2014, 15, 16 at Facebook. And uh, I had an interesting experience there working on their ads platform and then spent uh, four or five years teaching public school in Oakland. Hmm. You left Facebook, and then you went into uh, public school teaching? That's right. That's cool. It was um, a fun experience. It was something that really shaped my, uh, you know, my worldview and my perspective of you know, how people move forward in their lives and why people yeah. get educated and what they look out of their education. Right. That's really cool. I mean, you must have taken a huge pay cut from Facebook to <laughs> teaching. It was substantial. There was a lot of peanut butter and jelly and uh, and ramen yeah. noodles for yeah. for a couple of years. Yeah, it was, it was certainly not easy, but it was it was worthwhile. Nice. Um, like I don't know if this next question is relevant today, but sure. um, is it different like working at Facebook and working at Replay and also like the interview process? 
yeah, I mean, it, it couldn't couldn't be more different. It's a very different experience. Um, I was not particularly fond of Facebook. I thought that they didn't build products in a particularly imaginative or particularly user friendly way. Um, they, they, to many extents, don't value their users or their users' privacy or the experience that they impact upon people. Um, Repolit, we're a lot more focused on our customers. We kind of thrive based on our community. If our community is not succeeding, if our community is not producing virtuous things that's moving people forward and inspiring people, then we're failing. And so I think that the alignment is so different. Um, and so it couldn't be any more different. I think it's very natural uh, for me to go from being a teacher to being an engineer at Repla because it's all about making people successful and making people feel like they can contribute something. Um, that's what it's all about. Yeah. And um, what about the interview process? Was it different from like Facebook to Replit? Facebook uses a traditional whiteboarding process. So they didn't particularly ask any questions that were relevant to my job. Um, <laughs> <That's kinda funny. laughs> uh, I, I think that a lot of the reason, you know, Facebook is a very data driven company. And so a lot of the reason that they whiteboard is because analytics are incredibly easy out of whiteboarding questions. Uh, yeah. Facebook has a massive database of approved questions. You have to use approved questions and they track applicant experience uh, across the board for people who come in their pipeline. And some of that is for really good reason. You could, for example, compare outcomes based on gender, outcomes based on race, outcomes based on educational background. And you could say this question you know, is a question that only white men can answer. So let's stop asking that question. That, that's, right. a, that's a literal thing. At Facebook size, you need to be very concerned that yeah. you're asking a question that only appeals to white men. Uh, and so there's a de-biasing that's important. Part of the problem, though, is that you also end up asking questions that have nothing to do with people's jobs. Uh, mm -hmm. and so you're trying to use it as a proxy to measure someone's intelligence or capability or flexibility. It's, it's not about the job. It's about some other proxy measure to to measure the effectiveness of a person. Yeah, uh, I mean, it seems almost like an IQ test in a way. Yeah, it is. It's it's yeah. a puzzle. In yeah. Microsoft started this, and it spread around the industry as a, an acceptable way to measure someone's effectiveness. I would say that every other tech company I've interviewed with, Salesforce, Amazon, Microsoft, uh, Yahoo, they all used exactly the same strategies. Um, I wouldn't say there was anything particularly different about Facebook, at least their strategy, except that theirs is extremely data driven. They will right. analyze the data of the candidate experience and outcomes. Yeah. Interesting. Um, anyway, let's go back to the process at Webway. Sure. Um, so you said there is like a take home uh, algorithm question. That's right. People spend one hour. Yeah. Uh, what are those questions like, typically? Um, the question is going to be really focused on like a particular outcome. Um, it's usually like a one or two function program. And so there's going to be a defined input and a defined output. So um, what we try to do is provide it in some kind of context so that um, it makes a little bit more sense about why we're asking it. Like mm -hmm. asking you to reverse a linked list is also a one function question, but it has no context in kind of the work that we do. Um, so again, it is pretty tricky. Uh, but yeah, we're focused on like one uh, a one function kind of question, not something that's going to require you to scaffold an entire application. Right. Uh, so the candidate doesn't solve problems like in real time. No, we don't actually do it live. Um, so the process happens in sort of two phases. We do this phone screen phase. And so in this phone screen phase, um, we see whether or not the candidate can like solve this one function. And if this one function works particularly well, we have sort of a follow-up phone screen. And during that follow-up phone screen, we ask them to enhance this function. Uh, and that we actually do face-to-face. -face. So we let candidates uh -huh. spend about an hour writing their function. And then what's great about our interview process is then we get on the phone, they explain their implementation to someone if they did a good job. And then we say, hey, you know, I want to expand the scope. This function needs to handle a few more cases. And we see how they respond to just expanding the scope of the original problem a little bit more. 
which is mm-hmm. a pretty predictable engineering problem that you know we need to generalize a problem to handle more cases. Oh, I see. So that part is done live. Yeah, that's done over Zoom or Google Hangouts. Right. That's more traditional. It's not whiteboarding though. We're actually asking them to collaboratively code inside of a REPLit together. So it, yeah. it is a little bit more of a give and take. It's, it's a lot more collaborative than what a lot of people expect. Yeah, makes sense. So there are two phone screens, right? Yeah, that's really, I, I don't think I was clear about that before. It's the same problem, but we do it uh-huh. in two chunks. One is candidates take the time to understand the problem at their own pace. Uh-huh. And so they try to wrap their mind around it. And then we ask them, don't spend more than an hour coding it on your own. They'll give it to us. They'll email us the submission, the, the REPLIT link. And then nice. that particular REPLIT link will uh, turn into the code that we use for the face-to-face. Right. So the first phone screen doesn't have any coding portion to it. It's just behavioral questions. That's right. That's right. So we're, we're asking a lot more about the candidate's background to see if it's yeah. Makes sense. Uh, yeah, that that seems like that seems like a process that's closer to the actual job to me. Yeah, it works pretty well. Yeah. I mean, there's nothing that isn't perfect, uh, yeah. but it works. Hopefully, that was helpful in providing a little bit more context in how we interview here at Replit. I assume if you made it to the end of this video, um, working at Replit is probably something you're interested in. And if that's the case, um, in the description, you'll find a link to our careers page where you can see any positions that we currently have available. We're definitely hiring for a lot of engineers right now. Um, we'll also include a link to a video that walks through the seven reasons you should work at Rep. Um, that gives a, a little bit more context um, about our culture and our values. And so if bringing the next billion software creators online is something that excites you, you should definitely apply.